Ballpark Nation presents Welcome to Go Go Astros, your look at the two-time World Series champions from three guys who have been here since Art Howe had hair. Hey Astros fans, Brian Arbor here from the Go Go Astros podcast. Uh, lots of technical difficulties in Go Go Astros lands today with both of Jim's world and Andy's world. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll get through them quickly, uh, but uh, I'm going to give a short hop today. Uh, talk about it was actually a, it's decision day. Uh, five days after the World Series, teams have to make decisions. The Astros made a handful of decisions yesterday, which you've probably seen in the news, and I'm going to give a handful of comments on those. Um, the one that would be top in the news feed, but actually least important, is that Alex Bregman received a qualifying offer. This is essentially a procedural move for the Astros to get a compensation pick. Should he sign elsewhere? It doesn't really mean anything other than it's a bit of paperwork they had to fill out. Similarly, the team was required to activate every player off the 60-day injured list, which is not, is not active, uh, does not work in the offseason. Um, so they have to be on the 40-man roster. So... Some friends talked about yesterday that Lance McCullers got activated and, you know, also did last year at this time. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. Christian Javier did, too. I think that was mostly just a way to make, you know, Lance McCullers is always injured jokes. But sometimes enough people make the joke thing that I think people believe it. It's it, that part's not a big deal. But there were a handful of things on the bottom of the roster that I thought were interesting. One interesting one, Trey Cabbage was designated for assignment and taken up by the Pirates, and instead the Astros made a small trade, trading cash, basically to buy uh, Taylor Trammell, uh, who was a, at one point a top 100 prospect, uh, who was in a big trade from the, uh, from the Reds to the Padres back in 2000. Trevor Bauer was the biggest name in that trade. Um, then, and then got traded to the uh, Mariners has never sort of developed, but he had a really encouraging year in AAA last year for the Yankee system. Uh, he is a left-handed hitting outfielder, and he is out of options, so it is quite likely he would be the favorite to win a spot on the opening day roster as a left-handed platoon option, uh, particularly in left field. He's played some center field before, but is probably third on the depth chart behind Jake Myers and Chaz McCormick. Um, this doesn't preclude them from signing a bigger name outfielder, but I've never expected them to do that. I think they'll be, I think they'll be making a lot of these small moves this off season. Uh, we shall see. Um, they made some moves. A lot of the moves were at the back end of the bullpen and they lost a couple guys uh, there. Most notably Seth Martinez, who was also designated for assignment and picked up by uh, Arizona the Diamondbacks, notable in a person who made it through and is still on the 40-man roster is Forrest Whitley, who was, um, you know, pitched a tiny bit in the major leagues last year, made his major league debut, but pitched really well in Sugarland. And part of sort of my thought about that is this is the Astros front office looking forward and saying, who's going to be better in 2025? And their decision so far is that Whitley would be better than Martinez. Obviously, the Diamondbacks made a slightly different decision. Uh, we shall see how that works out. But uh, some of the bullpen guys they signed la off last offseason, uh, some of whom were, you know, Nick Hernandez uh, made it. We'll, we'll see. You know, he does. Uh, Caleb Borg, who was very effective and someone I sort of know to the Astros had really fixed, has certainly made it. And I do expect him to be in the opening day bullpen with the Probably has to be. I think he's out of options, but we shall see. Uh, one surprise in that, Penn Murphy, who never pitched for the Astros, uh, was picked up when he was injured off Tommy John uh, after Tommy John's surgery the season before. Uh, he was DFA'd, and actually the White Sox signed him. That person, the White Sox, should uh, sign with a flyer on this guy, and maybe he gets as a prospect in a trade later. Uh, but I thought the Astros had sort of signed him with an eye towards 2025, um, I take it from the fact the Astros let him go that they didn't think his rehab was going well. Again, a future-oriented decision. But the most interesting, I think, piece of news and the one that's sort of most meaningful is the Astros outrighted now, before he's no longer on the roster, Jose Arquiti. 
And there's sort of two things about that. One sort of the future oriented part of it here. Urquidy had Tommy John surgery last year and is expected to be out for the first half, possibly more of the 2025 season. So again, a future oriented decision. It's also a financial oriented decision. Urquidy has enough major league service time that he would go through the arbitration process. They essentially are non-tendering him, not tendering him, not offering him a contract. They may, actually, there was uh, some talk about that, particularly in Chandler Rome's reporting at The Athletic, that they may pursue him. Um, see that it would probably be a contract, a multi-year contract, but the first year would be very little, and the second year would be uh, more than that, with an anticipation of Urquidy being a real, you know, the real contribution he'll make, either in Houston or somewhere else in 2026. But it does save some money and provides the Astros, who are very close to the luxury tax threshold, um, some more sort of wiggle room. And even if they go over, could they go over? Yeah. Will they? I don't know. I, I was more confident they'd go over last year, last off, entering last offseason. I'm less confident this year there are extra penalties for going over multiple years in a row. Uh, we'll see uh, Jim Crane's comfort with that. I don't have a real good read on the tea leaves. Uh, for that, but it's something. To, but this was, I think, a pretty clear and obvious decision here that uh, you know, that um, Arquides, um you, you didn't want to spend as much money on Arquidi. We'll see what they do. He was not expected to be a real big contributor in 2025. We'll see how his rehab goes. But um, this is all sort of talking about sort of future forward and looking at 2025. I want to do a little backwards looking here at Jose Arquidi, who has been a um you know for me one of the players i have most liked in an astros uniform uh partly that stems from he served a really big role when he came up in 2019 in a pitching staff that was exceedingly top heavy that year of course you had you know, the top two guys in the Cy Young voting on the 2019 uh on the 2019 astros but depth was a big issue for that team and jose or uh played a big role in providing some of that on a team that, again, you know, had three aces and then had that. He came essentially out of nowhere uh, to do that and, notably, to win game four with five shutout innings of the 2019 World Series when the Astros were down 2-1. Uh, Part of why I'm affectionate about that game is I attended that game. I drove down to Washington, bought a really expensive ticket, a uh, scalp ticket, um, and uh, Jose Arquiti helped to uh, pay that off. So um, I'm, you know, particularly for 2019, but particularly in his role as a guy who would go out there would eat innings for you. His health has never been great, and that's been one of the frustrations with Jose Arquiti, and obviously didn't pitch last year because he had injuries and then re-injured himself and had the Tommy John, had the Tommy John surgery. So uh, that part's been frustrating, but as a guy who um, walks very few batters, gets you a lot of innings, and can let the offense go to work, uh, Jose Urquidy has been a player I have and will continue to have affection for. I wish him well in his rehab and hope he gets back to being in a major league rotation. Could that be in Houston? That is still a possibility. We will see that, but uh, Jose Arquiti is one of the unsung heroes of the Astros run in the last several years, and uh, this is a uh, this is my appreciation of Jose Arquiti. Good luck to you, big fella.